Hello and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 61. Today I have a beautiful soul and amazing friend, Taryn Ash, on the podcast today, and we are going to talk about uh, our spiritual practice, uh, witchcraft, and how it all... um, kind of weaves into disabilities and limitations. Um, I am so, so excited to have this conversation for her, uh, with her. I think that it is a subject we need to be talking about within the spiritual community, and it's definitely not talked about enough. Before we start, I just have a little bit I want to tell you about Blessed Be Magic. I want to take just a little bit of time and tell you about this company called Blessed Be Magic. Now, they design for witches by witches, and they create modern talisman jewelry to remind you of your magic. Check out their modern take on classic magical symbols such as the Triple Goddess, Triquetra, and Pentacle in their minimalist jewelry that you can wear every day, anywhere. Find your perfect talisman at Blessed Be Magic. That is magic spelled magic with a K at the end dot com. And use code WITCHYWOMAN for 15% off your order with them. Again, visit them at Blessed Be Magic. Magic is spelled with a K at the end dot com. And don't forget to head over to Instagram and like their page and follow them at Blessed Be Magic. You can head over to Instagram and check out my story. I did an unboxing of one of their amazing bracelets that I that I picked out. I absolutely love it. I'm wearing it. I've worn it ever since I opened up the box, but I do have a video there and I will be posting the unboxing on YouTube as well. Okay. I swear to God, everything that could have gone wrong today has. Yeah, I feel that energy today too. It's just kind of, it's weird. It is. It's odd. Uh so, we have Taryn on today, had you on before, because uh, mm-hmm. you are an Akashic reader, Akashic Records reader, Right. Um, but I wanted to have you on to show, or to let everybody know about the alternatives, because when I do my practice, it's different than yours, because you have limitations, it's just how shit right. happens. Right. Um, but I, when I'm like, cause I know when I'm making my products, I'm like, how could this be, how can someone else not use it? Like, is this going to be a problem for someone else? So it really started when I started thinking about how you do things and what limitations you have. It really changed the way I thought about creating products, creating mm-hmm. magical items, because I don't know what would be not usable and what would be usable. So right, there's right. others that can identify with this and mm-hmm, absolutely maybe just um, tell everybody if you're comfortable, tell everybody kind of what your situation is and how that affects how you practice. Absolutely. So I was actually diagnosed with RA, JRA, which is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis at, around the age of three. And it's, it's an autoimmune disease. Many of us are intimately familiar with those. Um, so I'm very physically limited. I have a lot of either partially or totally fused joints. So like I can't straighten my arms. I can't raise my hands up very high. I mean, this is, you can see my hands. This is, mm-hmm. this is it. I can't straighten my hands out. So I have had to learn from a very young age to adapt find stuff that works for me. Right. And back then, back then we didn't have the internet. We didn't have support groups. We, I had nothing. So I just kind of sat and looked around and well, what can I use to make this work? And what can I do? Cause I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back and have somebody do everything for me. Cause that's <laughs> for starters, you, that's unrealistic. You can't do that. Right. So what I learned with my magical practice and all of my spiritual practice basically is that do it in your head. Your mm-hmm. mind is the most unbelievably powerful tool and underrated and underused tool that we all have. And that applies to everybody, not just those that are physically disabled. 100%. And so uh, visualization is very key in everything that I do. Like I, I you did my Reiki mm-hmm. stuff so I can do Reiki, but I can't physically use my hands on somebody, yeah. but I do it in my head. I visualize another you know, like a carbon copy of myself standing next to the person putting her hands on it. And that, that works. I'm not actually touching them, but the intention is strong enough that it works every single time. And so I do that with everything. If, you know, if it requires some type of hand movement, I just close my eyes and I imagine myself doing that. And I've 
I've honestly never really felt, I started to feel left out at first. We had a teacher that I, we were a part of and, and she would part of, she wasn't a witch, but part of her practice was to open a circle to do the rituals. And Mm -hmm. she would do, you know, like a selenite wand around her with her arm. Very simple. And I remember asking her, okay, well, I can't do that. So is there some way that I can do that and still safely open the circle? And I think to her credit, I think she did say, just imagine right. doing that. But at the time I was like, seriously, that's, that's it. That's, that's all you're going to give me. Just think about it in my head. Okay. Mm-hmm. It took me a few years to finally have that click in my head that, yeah, you can do that just fine. And it is, yeah. it's very safe. It happens. It's, it's yeah. very purposeful. So, um, yeah, I've just had to everybody's different. You just have to learn what works for you. And that, that includes everybody. We don't need all the tools. Some of the tools are really awesome, but we don't need all of them. So, so yeah. That's awesome. So when, so in our coven, that's the one thing I've been really focusing on is when we do Mm -hmm. a ritual, I try to think of one for the people who don't have all the things. Mm -hmm. I try to substitute or give substitutes. If you don't have this, you can totally grab this from your kitchen or my tea light thing. Like I can, you can buy like, I think 50 tea lights at the dollar store for like really cheap. Yeah. Five bucks or something. So I use tea lights a lot in our coven because I know that that's something that everybody has access to. Right. And I start thinking about like, uh, not magic. The other day I was like, Ooh, I have a not spell for you. I'm like, well shit. Like, and I know that you can, do that with your mind. Like mm-hmm. I truly believe like if you just had, if you worked through the motions of that spell and we're imagining this energetic, cause really all that is like an energetic, when I do a knot spell, that's that, that piece of string is standing in for the energetic string, the energetic mm-hmm. thing that, that we're actually, um, that will actually carry out my right. spell or my intention. So I started thinking about that. I'm mm-hmm. like, I really want to be intentional now with the rest of my spell work and the classes that I'm offering on how to make it accessible for everybody mm-hmm. and not leave everybody out or, you know, or anybody out. Cause I really feel like witchcraft and magical practices in general and spiritual, just if you're just a spiritual person, not, mm-hmm. you know, magical being like a, like a witch, you don't use that li- label. I still think that everybody should try really hard not to, be so focused on what you can and can't do and Mm -hmm. try to involve everybody. Um, I know that's hard sometimes, but so as far as, so for other people that have similar limitations or boundaries of what you have to kind of work through. So a simple, so like a, a fire spell. So one that you just have to light a candle and do an intention can you tell us how, because I, I started thinking about like, how the hell do you light a candle? Yeah. See, so for me, I can, I can use matches. I, okay. that's my, that's safe for me to use. I can't use those automatic ones that you have to pull the trigger and cause I don't have enough strength in my hands. Mm-hmm. So I can't use those, like those tall jar candles that you burn yeah, for a week. Great. So for instance, I can't do that. At least I haven't figured out yet how to safely do that and not, you know, light myself on fire. Mm-hmm. But, um, Another option is they have those candles that flameless candles that they're just a light so that you can just switch on. Uh, but I've heard that some of those switches are kind of hard too. So that might be, you know, everybody's different. Oh yeah. Yeah. But that's an option if you, if you can't also for people that just can't burn stuff, you know? Yeah. I like that. I've never thought about but, those kind of candles. Yeah. I, I, I do tea lights. Tea lights are my main thing and I do white. I don't even try to do different colors. I just try to keep it as simple as possible and go with that. Mm-hmm. But the flameless candle thing, I, I need to get me some of those because there are days when I just don't want to do the extra. When you don't have the energy to do the extra work, yes. and that would be something simple that would represent the flame, mm-hmm. and and you're good to go. Absolutely, I've started, and this is something else. Like I was, I use tea lights, and then I will mm-hmm. carve the symbol of the thing. Mm-hmm. So if I'm working with Lilith, I'll cur- carve her symbol in there, and maybe because I'm a glitter girl, I'll throw like red glitter on there <laughs> to, to represent her. Right. Um, but then I'm like, can you carve a candle? Could you do that sort of thing? And is there an alternative to it, you think? I can. For me personally, I take a toothpick and I mean, it's not real neat or artistic, but artistic, but it works. And okay. uh, other than that, you know, if you can't, if you don't have the, the ability to do that, again, I would just do it in your head mm-hmm. or, or you know, take your finger. If you can't take your finger and draw it in the air, the symbol in the air over the candle. I was going to say, um, and if you can't use the pressure enough to carve it, you can use a marker. 
Right. Like you can draw on candles. Yep. Like it totally screws up your markers. I have a whole like yep. either only for candles uh, thing. And I draw on my candles if I don't want to carve them because I suck at carving them. I really do. I don't have that. It's hand. hard to be neat when you're <sighs> carving them. I don't know how people do it. It's messy, I don't know. But- I've seen the videos with the women just like <laughs> yeah. out super quick and these beautiful designs. Like it's, I struggle to put like one rune on a candle. Yep. I'm the same way. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's always it's, so messy. I've also used, you know, like roller bottle blends of oils. If it's a bigger candle, I will draw yep. symbols with the certain oils on it like that because then you don't have to push. You just swipe it on and Ooh, I like that. You're good to go. Yeah, but you have to be careful of the oils because some oils are flammable and, Oh yeah. You need to do your research about that. Yes. But, I have yeah. like made straight up torches accidentally by putting weird oils. Cause sometimes I'm lazy when I, I will, because I, I also don't have, I don't have a ton of like expendable income. So I get mm-hmm. a ton of candles from the dollar store and yeah. I like to put, make them my own. So then I'll put like herbs or oils and just dress the top of it. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, be careful. I don't remember what oil made it go poof. It might have been it might have been a cheap cassia oil that I had found and it's supposed to be cinnamon, but I have my I have my an inkling that there might have been some alcohol in mm, probably and it was diluted down because it was cheap. I'm like, "Oh, I'll just put that and I dumped it on there." I, I'm pretty sure that's the oil that it was. But anyway, I lit it and that sucker's went poof. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've read that eucalyptus is very, very flammable too. I mean, I've not tried that out, but yeah, you definitely you need to do your research with oils just to be yeah. on the safe side. So. Definitely, I put and you can put too many herbs on it. Mm-hmm. I've like dumped too many herbs on, and it just makes the entire top of the candle basically a torch. I mean, it yep. it, it didn't burn anything down, but it definitely scared the crap out of me the first yeah. time. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Um, yep. Yes, yes, yes. So, also, what else was I going to ask? Do when you think about your magical practice, like I, I forget because I don't see you as you're just the same as me. Like I don't mm-hmm. see the difference because I don't know. I just don't. So mm-hmm. I'm not always aware of it, and I'm guilty of that. Is there anything that you? Because I know we've had the same crappy teacher. (laughs) Um, Is there anything that you could tell other people that have a platform and that are teaching others that how to approach it? Like, because I know for me, if it wasn't you, if it was somebody else in our group that I knew had limitations, I would not know how to, to approach them and say, you know, is there anything I can do to make this easier? I don't want to offend them, but I do want to let them know that. Right. I will work my butt off to try to find a way for you to do the same things we do just in a way that's more comfortable for you. But I always feel like I'm going to offend somebody or make Mm -hmm. them feel, I don't want to make them feel any different. Right. And I think for me, I, and I know not everybody's like me, but for me, I appreciate when people ask, just straight up ask, Okay. You know, I'm literally, I grew up on the internet, so I'm used to people asking me all kinds of very intimate questions about what I can and cannot do. So for me, it's not a big deal. Right. For others, it might be, but I would say just, you know, try to be mindful. I don't see disability discussed in a magical and witchcraft circles or even spiritual circles. I don't think I've ever seen it openly discussed anywhere. And, yeah. and, um, I think it should be both sides kind of coming in together when you can, when you're comfortable enough, you know, speak up, you know, I can't do this. Is there some way that you could work with me to help me do something different? And, you know, obviously if you're a teacher, just, just put it out there. You know, if, if this method doesn't work for you, you know, contact me, maybe I can help you find another, another way. Just open communication is so big and I know not everybody's comfortable with that, but if you can definitely communicate that. Okay. Um, I know like I was, when I was doing all the courses, I am trying, so I know I'm going to, I know I'm, somebody's going to complain, um, at some point because the classes I have made are completely, how do I say they're going to be different for everybody. I have like a skeleton of the class. And then what the purpose of the student to do is to make that thing their own. So I'm going to give them, you know, a spell and say, show me how you do this in your I love that, you know, and, 
And then that'll be, it might be completely different and they can show me, okay, this is how I do it because I don't believe in this. I believe in that, or I have a disability and I, I can't tie a knot around a candle. Um, so I did it this way instead. So I think that's, you're the main reason. I mean, and there's everybody that's, that's in our group and that in the world that is, have that has limitations has been an inspiration but you for one like because I'm with you I'm, I, I'm thank I'm, you I'm all the way, and it's really really pushed me to to think of a magical practice in way different ways than just my way if that makes right. sense right and I love your idea for having it, everybody make their own thing and that's that's going to be beneficial for everybody because then everybody's going to see that okay there's not one way one right way to do this there's look at all these other ways that we can do it exactly and that, I, I think that's fantastic I think that for me I when I started doing things my own way it became it empowered me like before mm -hmm. I thought with the the specific spiritual teacher that we had I was doing the things and it didn't, I don't know, how do I, it didn't feel powerful. It didn't feel, right. I w it was like I was saying my ABCs and that was it. You know what I mean? Yes. And then when I stopped and panicked because I didn't have a leader and I started mm -hmm. doing things on my own, um, things changed. It was like a shift. And that's what I want for other people is to go, oh, that's my magic. This is my way. And that's what makes this whole thing more powerful is that when you do it your, your own way, the thing that resonates with you, that's what makes it powerful. So absolutely. I went through that too. That same, I didn't have a leader to follow. I didn't yeah. know what to do. If there was nobody leading me through this, how am I supposed to do this on my own? And I went through, it was months of not doing anything because I just felt like, you know, I don't have a teacher to follow. So what's the point? Yep. And then my guides kind of kicked my ass and said, you know what? You're not helpless. Mm -hmm. Do the stuff, yes. start doing the things. And I did. And, you know, I felt <laughs> it was awkward and I felt like I was kind of pretending and going through the motions until I found my rhythm. And then I'm like, Ooh, I can actually do this on my own. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. And from that on, that point on, once you learn that and you connect with your own energy and your own way of doing things, that's empowering mm -hmm. in a way that no teacher can really give that to you, no, no. matter how great they are. That's got to come from you. Absolutely. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is these, so I'm going to my first pagan, depending on if we are allowed to do this, um, mm -hmm. at the end of May, there's a pagan festival, and I'm going, and it's out in the woods, basically, and, you know, we're going to all camp, and it's going to be a hippy-dippy time, so <laughs> I asked them, because I was like, well, maybe Brad could bring you down and we could hang out and do all that. And I asked the organizer, I'm like, are you going to have handicap accessible spots? Because we all know how fun it is to go through dirt and. Oh, not, Lord, yes. Uh, yeah. Not have Wheelchairs are not all terrain vehicles. We can't yes. just go romping through the wilderness. <laughs> yes. Although Brad is like, I bet we could make one. Like he's totally like, I bet we could make one. You know what? We've done it. Sabrina and I did it out at the ranch. We literally took this wheelchair through the sand hills. I mean, it was difficult and it took like four people to do it, but we did it. Nice. Nice. And that's the thing I asked them. They're like, well, most of it will be sawed. It'll be pretty hard. And I'm like, okay, well, what about bathrooms? Well, we hadn't thought about that. I'm like, you're, how did you get insurance? How did you get invent insurance without, you know? So I wanted to talk to them about that. And that's, on my, like, if we go ahead, if they're going to have it, they haven't emailed me back. I'm like, are we having this or not having this? And I do want to talk to them about being more prepared because it's not, I hate to, it's not fair. Like you should, it's be, not, able no. you should no. be able to come out, uh, drive you right up to where like the workshops are going to be and mm -hmm. allow you to be there. You should be able to go to the campground and all the vendor tents and, and all this stuff. And it really freaking bummed me out that there really wasn't yeah. a plan they had a loose plan but their expectations of people's ability to push a wheelchair around through some of that stuff I think is way too yeah. high because like imagine if just your grandma took you there's no mm -hmm. way she could have nope. nope um like there's no there's no plan for a lot of these I started looking through. I'm like, okay, let me try a different, I just pipe typed in pagan festivals around just anywhere. And I mm -hmm. started looking at their events because if you go to a concert, 
there's usually a tab to click to find out the details about a handi handicap accessibility to a like a music concert. Mm -hmm. I'm like, surely they have that stuff. It is amazing how many don't. Yep. There's no, it's there's no information. Like, and a lot of those don't answer their phone. They don't answer the emails unless it's a, it's a, I would like to be a sponsor, <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of right. Way. So I, I found that I'm kind of bummed out about our spiritual community for not being a lot more proactive with that particular thing. It's, they're not. And it makes me kind of sad because that's what we're supposed to be about, you know, being inclusiveness. Yes, yeah. inclusiveness and being yeah. together and helping one another out. And in other areas, we're doing really, really well. I will say mm -hmm. that there's in, in other areas, it's really good, but that's the one area that we have. Nobody talks about nobody, nobody prepares for it. So I'm hoping this will at least yeah. start some conversations, at least make people think, yeah, it's, and it's just, you know, mostly people, they just don't think. No. And I get that. I understand that. But I also reach a point where I'm done holding hands here. And it's time that we start thinking outside of ourselves a little bit and, you know, think things through. And it's very frustrating. Everywhere I go, I see stuff every day. Mm -hmm. The thing that really bothers me is I will see something that has a handicap symbol on it. It's not even remotely something that I could use, even in yeah. a wheelchair. I see oh, stuff like, I see bathrooms. I can't even get through the door with my wheelchair and they get by with it. They all get by with it. And, and what I, am I going to do? Am I going to be the bitch that turns them in? And right. especially when they're small businesses, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to turn you in. You right. know, what, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So it kind of screws everybody all yeah. around and it's, it's very frustrating, but. I hope that people start talking about it because there's I other do. areas that they talk about plenty trying to accommodate for other people. Um, this is one that I'm hoping, I know there's another podcast that's going to, it's funny, we had talked about doing this, and then another podcast I listened to, there were, one of them has, uh, I'm not sure what she has, maybe some kind of autoimmune like I do, and she was talking mm -hmm. about, sometimes just not having the damn energy to do right. a ritual, because you literally, you don't have enough spoons, mm -hmm. and so they were going to talk about that, and I, I emailed them, like, dude, and they're like, oh, we should do an episode, you know, while they were in their episode they're talking about doing another you know one about that so I text them like dude I'm doing one <laughs> <laughs> they're like That's good great. and they're they're gonna talk about it too and hopefully their listeners can start conversations with people exactly. I don't I don't consider that I have a disability but I have an energetic <laughs> I guess lacking some limitations I, yeah yeah I yeah. Right now I'm going through a flare up. I had this beautiful ritual that I was going to do and I'm not doing it. Yep. I just don't have, I don't have the strength. I don't, I'm tired. I'd like to go to sleep. My whole body hurts. And when I do rituals and spells, when I feel like this, they just fall flat anyway. Yes. And, yeah. I, I definitely, I, in the same way, I don't, my practice is kind of, sometimes it's few and far between, you know, I don't always recognize all the moon faces and I, I very rarely anymore do I do a full on ritual. It's usually just kind of mentally working with the energy somehow and acknowledging, mm -hmm. okay, it's a full moon and that's, that's nice. And yep. it's kind of it. I mean, I, you know, when you've, you've got so much going on and there's only so much, and that applies to everybody. You only have so much energy. It's yes. only going to go so many places. So yes, nobody's and, perfect. And we need to forgive ourselves because sometimes yes. I feel like we were like, Oh, I'm a bad person or a bad yes. witch because I didn't do that Sabbath or I forgot. Or Cleanse or feel like you can't call yourself a witch because you don't do rituals every day. That's bullshit. Yes, that's You're horrible. still a witch. Yes. I still consider myself a witch when I, and even though I don't actively practice as lot as, as many other people and that's fine. Exactly. I think that's a big thing is forgive yourself. Like mm -hmm. it's not anyone's fault. It's not my fault that I have lupus and that I can't yep. do that that day. And it took me a long time to grasp that I guess because I would get so pissed off at myself this is yep. I mean it's fairly new for me I think was it last year I got diagnosed mm -hmm. so and it really hadn't affected my life until last year but last year I had a really big depressive and energetic thing happened and I think that's what triggered it mm -hmm. that's what, my naturopath and I she's very energetically in tuned as well and she's like you might have just had enough stress and enough shit mm -hmm. going on that it finally just, that was it. And that's what triggered yep. it. So I'm learning. Um, yep. 
but uh, I still, I still have days where I'm like mad. I'm so mad. Absolutely. Absolutely. I still, I've, I've had this for, God, I'm 41 years old. That tells you how long I've had this. I still mourn the loss of my life than it used to be. I used to be walking. I used to, in high school, I walked along with everybody else. I mean, it damn near killed me sometimes, but I did it. Right. I kept up with everybody and I, I still mourn that. Oh, I bet. I don't think I'll ever stop mourning it. Probably not. You just, you, you just work through it as it comes and do the best you can. Right. I, I remember like my earliest memories of you were, remember the trike? Like the big yes, bicycle. Yes, the you big had? bike, three wheeled, yeah. With the, with the basket in the front. Mm hmm. Like yep. I remember when we were little, you would we'd ride that around town. The doctors told me that I would never have balance enough to ride a bicycle. So that's why we got that. Because we thought, oh, yeah. okay, well, I can still ride something Heck like yeah. that. Well, then I had another bike that my cousin would ride. And I was fiddling around just a regular two-wheel bike. I was fiddling around on that. And I accidentally taught myself how to ride a two-wheel bike. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Perfectly fine. Yeah. From that point on, I was just like everybody else. So, yeah. you know, not... Nothing against the medical community, but no. they don't know everything. No. When they, tell you, when they tell you you can't do something, that's not always the case. No, it's not. I think Especially back then. Back then, they just kind of guessed and did the best that they could. Probably. Yep. I, I, I always, like, I love my naturopath, and I love my new doctor. I got a new, like, general practitioner. Oh. So I have a new doctor doctor up in um, Hot Springs, and she is Good. so much... I really like the way she deals with lupus. She's like, here's the deal. Um, we could put you on meds, but it's, this is what it does to you. And she's right. like, rather not. So I love that you're working with a naturopath. Here's what I can do for you as far as Western medicine goes. And, and she just kind of is, lets me just go uh, navigate it myself. If I hit a yes. wall somewhere, she's like, okay, you call me and we will figure out that. Cause right now it's perimenopause and lupus are like fighting. <laughs> yeah. so, so That's a hell of a combination too. <laughs> it's fun. I feel bad for Brad. <laughs> so, so that's what, like, she's really good about that. She's like, just let me know if you come across like energetic, like I have no energy lately. And I think that's partially because of the stupid perimenopause. So mm -hmm. she's like, when it becomes too much, when all your other stuff isn't working, we'll worry about some kind of supplement or some way to boost your energy. And until then, she's like, you do you. So I, That's awesome. I, I cannot, I've been through like four doctors, Western medicine doctors, and they've all kind of fell, fell flat. But this one, and she's a VA doctor. Wow. I know. I didn't have very high expectations, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I really like, I switched regions and started going to hot springs and they're mm -hmm. fabulous. They are oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Movies. There is nothing worse than a bad doctor. And I've, yeah. I've got a really good one. And that's one reason why, you know, the future, I don't want to go anywhere because I have this doctor that I have built years of trust with. Oh, yeah. That's not guaranteed. There are so many people that don't have a good relationship with their doctor and that makes everything so much worse. Yes. Yeah. So I think, uh, open communication with your doctor, yes. with everybody. I think that's so important, no matter who you are. You know? And question things. I mean, they're human. You know, question. If you have concerns, for the love of God, bring it up and ask them. Yeah. You're not always going to agree, and that's okay. But yeah, I think a lot of the older generation just were taught to, you know, this is the doctor. You do what he says. That's it, period. You don't Absolutely. speak up. Nothing. So my dad does. Yeah. He's like, well, this is, this is what it is, and I guess whatever. I'm like... You don't want a second opinion? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I've had some bad experiences with doctors. So when I first started seeing my current doctor, I, I sat down and I said, look, this is how it is. I don't trust doctors. I don't like you guys. So I'm going to need you to be straight with me and then we're going to be fine. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. That's kind of just how I, I was snippy because at that point I was very on edge and oh, yeah. stressed out and it was fine. He's like, gotcha. You We're good. Through a ton. Um, so how, I want to talk about your spiritual practice and witchcraft. How has it helped? Because I, to me, looking in, I feel like, I'm not saying that it's an advantage, but you really are pow powerful with your mind. Like you can tell that when you do Reiki or when you're, when I'm with you, your like third eye energy and all that is very, very focused. Um, and I think 
it's like they say, like when you lose one sense, you heighten the rest of them. Like, right. You know, and when I tell people they want to uh, sharpen their clear audience, they want to hear clear hearing, close your eyes, cut off mm -hmm. something so that you can't, you know, one is gone so that you can focus. So I think for you and my experience with you is that you're, you're very focused in mm -hmm. the third eye area. Does that I agree you? with that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think it's, it's an advantage actually, because I've basically had no choice, but to sharpen the mental abilities and develop that. And, and it's been, it's helped tremendously because it's empowered me. I feel like I'm actually, even though I've had a lot taken from me, I have felt like I've had a lot taken from me in this life. Oh, yeah. I have this other thing that has given me an unimaginable amount of freedom that I never thought that I would have again. I might not be able to be up and walk, but I can do shit with my mind. Absolutely. And that makes me, that's, that's limitless. I mean, your mind, you can do anything with your mind. And that's, mm -hmm. I have to spend a lot of time at home indoors, which is, I struggle with that a lot. But the focus for me, if I didn't have something else to focus and empower me, I would, I don't know if I'd still be here. I would, I think I would have gotten to the point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. So it's been, my spirituality is incredibly important to me because I learned how to empower me and also it helps me to work with my body it helps me to be kinder to my body mm -hmm. yeah I get frustrated with it and I was I was angry with it for a long time and right. I view it more now as we're partners yes my body isn't me but we're together here doing this thing so you know you just like any partnership you communicate and you try to do support each other so but yeah absolutely it's yeah the freedom yeah, I need to, it's something that my guides have been pushing me to write about. I need to write about it, I know, but yes, we'll see how that goes. Yes, I, I think that you have a very unique perspective on spirituality that mm -hmm. would start an amazing conversation. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think it's something that the world needs um, because if you go right now and Google that subject, there's not shit. There's not much, no. And I've not looked a whole lot, but just what I did. And that's kind of par for the course. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of, in a lot of different areas, you don't find a lot, but yeah, I just, I'm one of those people where if you have questions, come question, come, I'm a stranger, but message me, ask me. Yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to answer questions to the best of my ability. It's from my experience anyways. I'm, I'm good with that. So. Good. Um, so because it's Corona time, uh, we've got to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> uh, corona um, time. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm an introvert. I spend most of my days in this house. If I'm not out with my ponies, my horses, then I'm in this house. It's mm -hmm. where I feel safe. I like to read. I binge on Netflix. I, um, you know, I hide behind a microphone and do podcasts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm an introvert. So it's yes. not bothering me. I do see Brad and Maddie about to go crazy. Like Maddie is quarantined for 14 days. Mm, wow. Before this whole thing happened, I mean, it had like, we saw it happening and they had paid for some ski stuff mm -hmm. her and her boyfriend. And so they went skiing and they came back. And according to the new guidelines, we have to, we had to report that she went out of the area and then she has to be quarantined for 14 days. So she's about to go. It's literally, she just got back yesterday and she's like about to lose her damn mind. <laughs> already i'm like oh, oh. My god um, i think it's going to be really hard for the the social people yeah for us it's you know just another tuesday yeah honestly I like things down more but that's it yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much the house smells like yeah. bleach yeah that's exactly it smells like disinfectant wipes that's kind of the yeah. only new thing so same same with me um let's did you so i bet there's tons of theories which i don't even care about like honestly i know there's a lot of theories about where it started and how it's going and if it's a cover-up for that i really don't care all i want is mm -hmm. humanity to be safe yes so that's what i've been focusing all of my if i have any extra energy at night when i meditate i try to send out reiki to the situation mm -hmm. so that's how i've been dealing with it because i don't know what else to do I, i'm kind of frustrated um yeah, today I feel better. Yesterday I bawled a lot. The day before I bawled a lot. Do you see the pictures of Italy and all these people? Yes. Oh my God. And China and all around the world. And we're, we're in a strange, 
it's just a strange time. Like it really is weird. I feel like <clears throat> I feel like half of the world thinks it's the zombie apocalypse, and the other half is like, just stay home. Like <laughs> that. I feel yeah. like that's the way it's it's gone, and and that's all I know how to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. The thing that I noticed pretty early on into this is I was. Yeah, there was a lot of fear. I mean, I was scared. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm still worried. There's fear there for oh, me, same. but the. I'm literally worried for people I don't even like, like all of humanity. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm sitting here worrying for all of them. Like I can feel, I think a lot of us are feeling a connection. It's awakened that, yeah, we are all connected Yes. because right now we have this big scary thing that's not discriminating against anything. It's going, it's, you know, everybody's fair game and, yep. and that was kind of hard to, yeah, I saw, what was it? A cartoon mm -hmm. yesterday that just, I sat and bawled just over a cartoon. So I, it's, I think because we're empathic, I think yes. it's simplified a little bit. What are th maybe some tips that you do as far as managing that empathic side of you? What are, what are you doing right now? So for me, I go outside, I go stomp mm -hmm. around in my grass. I go hug my damn tree. Like I've literally been doing things like that. So what are, what are you doing? My main thing is, try if I get overwhelmed I try to if I'm, especially if I'm online at the computer or on my phone I step away I take some breaths and try to just a couple of slow breaths mm -hmm. if that doesn't work then I sit my ass at my altar and try to meditate it's not always I mean when I get stressed and freaked out it's kind of hard but I will make myself at least sit there and you know hold a crystal and watch the candle and mm -hmm. just connect anything yeah. um you know, I pray. I, like you, I don't know what else to do. I pray. I don't even know how to pray for this. Honest to God, I don't know what specifically to ask. I've been praying for compassion in the hearts of everybody. That's pretty much I think that's what a big I've been one. hoping is yeah. that this... Help each other for the yeah. love of God. Just I feel do like, what you can. Yep. I feel like it's a really shitty situation, of course, but... And I hate to be the hippie silver, like there is a silver lining to everything. Yeah. You look hard enough. Yeah. And I think this is showing everyone how connected we are. We are mm -hmm. so deeply connected. We are connected to the very first person that started this. We are connected because we are. We're connected yeah. to China because that's where we get our drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get a lot of our medications, our supplies, our freaking toilet paper. Um, so we have to rely on everybody. I mean, we, yes. we all have to, we all have a part in this. So yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's, they're literally showing people like just the toilet paper thing. It's literally showing people what you do when you're greedy, you are depriving someone else. It's not just that you're self absorbed and, Oh, I wanted that. No, it's you take something, take too much of anything. You're, depriving somebody else of that yes. thing. Um, and I think it's a very uh, simple concept that is being like broadcasted in right mm -hmm. now. Yes. Your actions affect your neighbor. You know, yep. your act if I'm here inside and I'm not leaving because I have lupus and you know, I'm, you know, my immune system doesn't handle things very well. I catch mm -hmm. everything. My neighbor across the street here is super, uh, he, he was in the hospital for like three weeks, oh. like a while ago, he's had surgeries, he's very high risk, and mm. I started thinking about all of, I know that Arthur is too, Hyannis is a very uh, elderly centric, like yes. tons of elderly people here, and I just, it makes me very frustrated, and I've had to deal with anger right now. Mm -hmm. Because I get mad and I, I see people going like online, like, hey, I'm, I'm headed to Denver. Anything, anybody need anything from me? No, you're going to a place where there's shitloads of cases. Stay home and don't come back here. Or, you know, if you're going to leave, don't come back here because you could get, you know, you go to the grocery store and touch a bunch of crap because that's what we do. We pick things up. We look at the label and we put oh, it all the time. Yes. Um, so then, you know, neighbor over here that has really high risk needs to go get something, picks the same thing up, takes it home and itches their eye. Yep. It, it's all, all it so connected. Like that's, what's blowing my mind is it's little, the universe. It's bringing to mind more mindfulness because we're not, and I mean, even for me, mm -hmm. my God, I didn't realize I, honestly, I wasn't washing my hands enough. I didn't realize that I until now. I'm like, oh my God, how are we still alive? How have we not caught something? Yes. 
and before now because it's just yep. and the touching the face everybody nobody can stop touching the oh face. my gosh i swear to god it's i swear to somebody's gonna i just did it again somebody yeah. has got to show me like i'm gonna go ahead and put this eventually i'll i'll put it online but somebody will have to put at the end of this how many times did i touch my face <laughs> Yeah. Like, I swear to God, it's probably dozens. I've got like, I can't, I physically can't touch my face. So I have that going for me, but I have other things that touch my face. So I have to be sure and clean those. And that's, that's taken a lot of my energy, just it cleaning is. that stuff. So. I, I had no way. So I was just going around everything Maddie touches. I clean. Yeah. I, she's been pretty good about cleaning up about, you know, wiping things down after she touches it. But oh my God, it's an all day thing. Yeah. And I know she's sick of it already. She's like, I'm so sick of the coronavirus. I'm so sick of, di you know, cleaning up and, you know, and I get it, but it is really, if there's one thing we can learn from this is that we're all so intimately connected. We're yes. connected to the guy clear across the world, you know, that's sitting in a hospital bed. We're connected yeah. to everyone. And I already believed that, but it's shown me in a tangible way really shitty tangible way yeah. really shown me like this is a truth like if you can think of anything like we have certain truths in life you know we are going to die someday my yes. flesh will run out and die out and my spiritual body will ascend that's mm -hmm. the truth um another truth is that we every one of us is connected to everyone else so, yes and I'm seeing a lot of people that have never openly talked about that kind of thing before. I'm seeing them question that a lot right now. Yes. Which is which fantastic. I think is, yeah, it's a good thing. Yes. There are, there are some good things. There's a lot of scary things coming around with this, but there are some very good things that are happening too, which is, which is a huge relief. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. There's gotta be something good coming out of things like this. I mean, yeah. one, it's pointing out how crappy our healthcare system is. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully that'll get fixed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it is, and all around the world, it's pointing that out. We don't have enough hospital beds or ventilators or respirators. We don't have enough of the things that we need to handle this kind oh. of threat. And we'll only get more of these as time goes on because as we evolve, so do viruses and bacteria and everything else. It's just how shit works. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So I'm hoping that the healthcare community worldwide learns and starts making a plan for if this happens again, because this yeah. may be the last time in our lifetime that this will happen. I'm sure. I mean, we, we've, we've, we've had H1N1 and SARS and, uh, what was the other, oh, swine flu or whatever. That was oh yeah. Bird There's flu. Been quite a few of them. Yeah. When, was it when we were in high school, they had the bird flu? There was something. There was one thing that they were talking about that showed up randomly and then randomly did. Viruses are weird. Weird. I don't understand how they keep track of them. So kudos to them for doing right. that. But they're, they're complicated. Yep. No. And I think until humanity learns some pretty big lessons, this is just a cycle that's going to keep happening. Yeah, I would agree with that. But I, I think I know a lot of other spiritual conversations that I've had with people. They have agreed. I think the world is awakening. Mm -hmm. like, this is a big awakening for a lot of people. Um, and it's uncomfortable. And I know a lot of people will probably hear that. And I think some people hear awakening and they're like, seriously, yeah. mm -hmm. really? It's consciousness. You're just it's being aware. It's you. It's all it is, aware. is awareness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Reword it so that the muggles don't get squirmy. <laughs> even I, I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of this and even I sometimes get yeah. a little irritated at that. I think it's, well, that sounds yeah. a little pretentious, but okay. I get your point, you know? <laughs> Yes. All it is is being aware and a yeah. mindful of you and your actions and the rest of the world and how it affects. I think, I think that's, it's scary. And I think that's where a lot of the fear is coming from, from some people is that they're, mm -hmm. fine. they're like, Oh shit. That's, that's an, that's a truth. And it's hard to deal with some, if you have not believed that your entire life <clears throat> faced with something like that, I think it challenges your belief system and you absolutely fear mm -hmm. so I don't know I hope it's all over soon <laughs> oh I do too it's been an interesting ride so far <laughs> yes. I have decided I think I talked to you earlier about it but I have I want to tell everybody's like what do I do what do I do I'm I'm I've gotten a lot of questions like what am I supposed to do like mm -hmm. in my house I'm alone all day you know whatever if you're not used to being an introvert one 
books. <laughs> mm -hmm. Books, and I am going to start, because normally I get up, I slap on a ponytail and some, like, lately it's been kitty cat pajamas. <laughs> that's how I go about my day. But I decided to make myself feel like I'm being productive and I don't get, because mm -hmm. eventually being told I cannot go to the grocery store is going to frustrate me. Oh, yes. So I decided I'm going to get up and put on actual pants. Like right now I, I have pants on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I'm going to put on pants and at least do my hair a little bit, put on some basic makeup as if I was going to go to work. And that might not be right for everybody, but for me, it's going to make me feel like I'm functioning. And no, That's unquote. exactly what I did today, too. That's why I put some makeup on. I put something other than pajamas on. <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of nice just to do something nice for yourself. Yes. Once in a while. So, and that I decided that's, it's good for me. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I have my, I'm a yoga. Um, I love Qigong because, uh, during a flare up, I can't do a whole lot. Like yoga mm -hmm. even hurts sometimes too much, but Qigong, I can stand there and bounce around and, you know, it's basically touching my meridians. And for me, that mm -hmm. moves my, at least moves the energy around for me and self reiki. Like those are the things awesome. I'm going to do every day. Yeah. I need to do more self Reiki. I, for some reason I can never, I can do it on other people, but I never think to do it on myself. I do it on my water. Usually when I, when I think yes. about it, my yes. first thing of water in the morning, I try to Reiki and get some good juju going, but I've been doing it to my coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm having to cut back on coffee right now. I'm having reflux issues and I figure, oh. well, I'm not, can't exactly run to the doctor for random things. So maybe mm -hmm. I should be smarter about the beverages. So I'm trying to drink more tea. It's not the same. Yes. I have ordered um, my naturopath, for anybody listening, my naturopath um, suggested ginger, culinary sage, and mm. uh, thyme, and have that in a tea. And I actually got tired of mixing it because I'm lazy, uh, <laughs> I, and I'm going to run out if I keep drinking this tea so much. I went yeah. and it was cheap. I got it on Amazon. I don't know if you can still get it now, but you, it was like eight bucks for a big box of each one of those. Hmm. And I'm just going to put the, each tea bag in together. Like, so I'll have yeah. tea bags in and that's how my tea will be made. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm like, I'm going through it so fast. I'm like, I better get something. And then I heard on, uh, cause everything's true on the internet. Um, oh, of course. Yeah. I heard that Amazon is limiting restocks of non-essentials from companies. So you're not going to be able to get like sparkly glitter shoes <laughs> anymore. Which I, I know. So yeah, I kind of expected that to happen though, with all the shipping and people running out of the good stuff. And I don't know. Yep. So uh, another thing I wanted to kind of point out to everybody, I know Amazon is going to take a crap at some point. You know, right mm -hmm. now, like I went to go get that oxycillium, the flu, the homeopathic flu medicine, and I wanted to get that because that helps symptoms. So if anybody, if any of us gets and they are like just self quarantine. Um, I thought that might be a good thing to have on hand. They're $40 mm -hmm. a piece on Amazon. Oh, They're wow. They're $12 at the grocery store. They're well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. So, and, and uh, they're nowhere else. I couldn't find them. I had somebody look, couldn't find them, but there are small mm -hmm. grocery stores. So if you can get to a small grocery store somewhere or a health food store, um, you can get that kind of thing. But I also, somebody pointed out, like, what about all of us with small businesses? Um, there's ways like buy a gift certificate for after you can get out. So like, mm -hmm. I can't go get my nails done. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would call them and buy a gift, like a, a gift card for myself. Oh yeah. But when it's all done, yeah. I have supported them and I can go get my nails done. Um, Etsy, Etsy has so mm -hmm. much stuff. People don't think there's stuff on Etsy that you would need during something like this, but there really is. There's so much stuff. I spent just a little time this morning searching basic things, uh, tinctures and vitamins. A lot of people make homeopathic remedies and they put them on Etsy and Etsy's fine. There's no, there was no lag. There was no snow slowing down. They haven't mm -hmm. announced that they were going to close, but Etsy supports small businesses. Yes. So, yes. That's what I've decided. We have Shelly Leg Leggett. She does mm -hmm. herbs. So any herbs I don't already have, like I'm about to run out of mugwort, 
and something else. I was doing an inventory. Like everybody else is like, how many cans of beans do I have? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to run out of fruit. How much sage do I have? Yes. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to run out of sage. I'm going to run out of herbs. What am I going to do? So I'm like inventorying everything. And Shelly has huge sage sticks and all. I saw that. I got to get me some of those when I run out of mine. Yes. And she has the elderberry syrup. Uh, mm -hmm. pre-mixture packets. Um, so if anybody is listening that does not know where to get elderberry syrup, you can get it from her. She has a video on how to work it, uh, how to make it. I am, uh, let's, uh, how do I word this nicely? I am lacking the skills of a domestic witch. <laughs> so I was a little intimidated, intimidated by making a syrup, but she, it's super easy. Like <laughs> it really, it, you yeah, add some water and you boil it and you strain it and you add some honey and it was done. Awesome. So, yeah. And I didn't screw it up. So if I can do it. <laughs> y'all can do it. <laughs> so, um, check her out. I think, um, Oh, Rena offers. So Rena, uh, holistic healing therapeutics. So I've got to schedule one with her. Um, I'm feeling like shit. I think I need a little, I felt the heaviness of everything and yeah. She does diamond, uh, inner diamond sessions, which is basically realigning, re you know, kind of, to me, it's like a restart. When I feel like shit, I call her and we do one of those and I feel like somebody hit the, the do over button. So when I've mm -hmm. done, I feel like I've gotten like a really powerful Reiki session is what it feels like to me. I feel more connected to my spirit team when I get done and I feel physically better when when we're finished so if anybody's out there feeling heavy and needing a little cleansing um she does that you can go to our sponsor Rena's awesome yes amazing i know she's got a new key coming out i saw i cannot wait to see what that's all about that'll be great i cannot wait uh i've been sleeping with the dragon one <laughs> <laughs> i sleep with the alchemy one it's by my bed every night i i love these keys they are I, somebody was asking me, how do they, how do they work? What do they feel like? And I don't know when I touch mine, especially right now, my dragon key and I, we're like this. So <laughs> when I touch that thing, like, I'm not kidding. My whole body just feels like it's, it's buzzing. Like it's like awakens all my molecules and I'm, I'm buzzing all over. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way that one makes me feel right now. Um, I use the original one. For pendulum work and mm -hmm. Aurora one, the Aurora, the one with the really, mm -hmm. big, um, I've been using that one to, uh, clean out my aura. So I'll be mm -hmm. meditating and I'll use it to like scoop crap out, you know, metaphorically, I guess I'll, I'll literally like mm -hmm. be holding it and be like, okay, I feel something over here and kind of wave it next to it. Mm -hmm. It feels bad. So. I, really I like to use that one when I'm doing intuitive work, the, uh, the Aurora key. Yes. I do it when I'm doing my tarot or mm -hmm. Akashic records or even just meditating. It, it likes to sit with me in meditation. I think it helps in and general. It, it'll help raise your vibration if nothing else, but there's, oh, yeah. I like that. That's it's unique to every person. Mm -hmm. We, I used uh, the, the very first one. So when I went out and I put the cures mm -hmm. that arena showed me needed to go when I did the ranch, that whole thing with the ranch, when I put in all those little copper cure sticks, I used the original one. I would hold it and it would be like a pendulum and I would wow. stop. It would like be going like this and we go to the right spot and it'll just, <clears throat> that'd be the end of it. It would stop. That's awesome. And I never would have thought to use it for that either. I pay, I saw it sitting there. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take it with us. I didn't know what mm -hmm. I was going to use it for. I'm like, I'll take it with. And all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, it wants to be a pendulum. So for mm -hmm. me, it's a pendulum. And I never really even worked with pendulums before. Like I, yeah, I, I've, I've got one, but I don't ever really mess with yeah. it either. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, it's pretty. But that one, mm -hmm. that's what I do. I have, uh, if I'm doing any kind of intuitive work where I need to do, uh, like a, a muscle test, like reflex test, I will, mm -hmm. you know, hold it up and, and ask it if I, you know, ask it the same question I was asking my intuition and kind of gives me a, I don't know, one more layer of, okay, that's right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so that's how I use it. Um, if you feel comfortable, do you want to talk about the Akashic records? And sure. Um, 
for me right now, that's been a good source of comfort for me. It's just, it's a, a very empowering tool. I had one of your listeners reach out to me the other day after listening to the episode that we did on Akashic Records, and she was she wanted to know how to learn how to do it herself, which I thought was fantastic. It's yes, um, it's in a higher level, a higher dimension. So when you open them and you access it, you it's just a complete shift. Right. If you're sensitive to energy, if you're an empath in particular. Mm-hmm. It's totally different. There is no fear. There is no chaos. There's no confusion, no nothing. It's just, it's calm. It's open. It's, it's very relaxing. And I, I opened mine the other day. I've kind of, I took a break because I, I had some shit go down and I, I quit literally all of my practice. So I had been on a break for a while and I've kind of slowly been getting back doing it for myself, but I opened it the other day and, and it was such a nice break from just literally I feel the chaos swirling around us all the time. It's just this maelstrom of everybody's fear. And, yeah. and um, interestingly enough, the information that I got kind of jived with what several other readers got too. And that was kind of just, you know, we have our own power, even though all this shit's going down, we're not helpless. Right. But we need to kind of learn to fend for ourselves in some ways and help reach out and help other people. And it was very, they wanted to really emphasize community mm-hmm. and, you know, just gathering. I mean, we're, we're sequestered in our houses a lot of times, but we have the internet. We have this video chat. Mm-hmm. I have been video chatting with so many people. As mm-hmm. an introvert, I have never been more social than the <laughs> last week. Yeah. And it's, it's been great. I've been checking up on people and they've been checking up on me. And yes, but yeah, um, anybody that, even has the even the slightest interest in the Akashic Records, I recommend just to get a book and read about it. Yeah. And if, if you like that, then check it out. Find some classes I can recommend people. Definitely. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I think everybody should learn to do it. It's very empowering. I, I think it's a beautiful service. It's a beautiful uh, modality. Mm-hmm. I think it's something that I hadn't even heard of until you started doing it. I was like, what is this thing? And when it you was, read, yeah. the readings are beautiful. I really, and I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm hoping to get back into that again. It's, Love I just it. have to keep, it takes you a while after you've taken a break from whatever you're doing, it takes a while to get back in the swing of things. And it's, I think now is the time to get back in the swing of things. So I'm trying to, trying to get there. <laughs> I think so. I, I just started doing readings again and I mm. was I was terrified to do the first one. I hadn't done it yeah. a couple months and I was like, oh my God, this feels like the first time I did one and me mm-hmm. and butterflies and it was oh man, yeah. Oh very overwhelming, but it yes. was good because afterwards I'm like, oh my gosh. I, it's for me, I it's almost like you know the adrenaline junkies that do things because it feels good afterwards? Like, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, it feels so good. Yes. If I do a reading, it's like that. It's like afterwards, my whole body, I think it's a crown chakra buzz. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I, don't I get that too. I am the same way. Every reading, I was always, always, always nervous to do it. And I would feel the jitters throughout the reading. Yeah. As soon as I closed it, yeah, it's a high. It and is. You're buzzing. No yeah. matter how much I try to ground, you're buzzing for a while. So. Mm-hmm. It's, it's incredible energy. It's, it's incredible work. I've never, never experienced anything like that before intuitive work. And it's, it's incredibly humbling to do intuitive work like that because you, it's not you, you're not doing the information. You're the channel. The information is coming through you. Yes. And it's, it's just, it's wonderful. I absolutely love it. Like if we were talking the other day in our little group about how, like if anybody would have told me 10 years ago, this was what I would be doing, I would have told them, what the hell are you smoking? Like, right. No yeah. Way. Like what? I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't even know any of this existed. I mean, witchcraft, I knew about that, but all this other stuff, I had no clue. Nope. I, I, I don't know. It all, it's so funny. When I went to school to do the hypnotherapy, I had to take a, uh, what did they called it? I think they called it intuitive something or other class. I think it was supposed to be like an angel reading type mm-hmm. class. And, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. And I, they made me take spiritual life coaching and I didn't mm-hmm. want to, I'm like, I don't want to do that. I just want to do it in a therapy. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. Uh, and after I took those class, cause they made me do a bunch of readings. Um, I think I was one of those. Yep. You did a reading for me. Yeah. 
And after I started, I'm like, I don't know what else I could do because this feels so right. Mm, like, wow. I was so mad. I call, I tried. I <laughs> called my advisor. I'm like, I'm not taking these classes. This is dumb. Why should I have to pay for that if that's not what I want to do? And they're like, <laughs> the curriculum. if this is what you want to do, if you want the mind body, if you want the certificate at the end, you have to do these classes. I'm like, freaking fine. <laughs> and <laughs> I was so mad. And <laughs> The, the instructor, like, I was salty with him to begin with <laughs> because I remember he was, like, you know, we're in a little group online, and he was, like, everybody introduce yourselves and why are you taking the class? I'm, like, my name's Danae Sweet, and I got to take this class. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Like, afterwards, I'm, like, I'm really sorry that I was such an asshole in the beginning. <laughs> I really, really enjoy it, and that's – I barely do hypnotherapy anymore. I do it on myself. I do help self hypnosis and every once in a while there'll be somebody want to do past life regression. So right. that's really the only things now I do past life regressions using hypnotherapy. I don't read. Uh, I know some people do readings for past mm -hmm. life. So I don't do that. We use, we use uh, hypnotherapy and then the client. So like you would tell me while you're under all of what you're seeing, which is super fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't even do the thing. Wow. I should have just skipped by bypass all the other shit and just did all this personal <laughs> stuff because I ended up doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. But I love how things just work out that way. I do too. And I love that there are so many unique modalities out there and we don't even know all of them. And just the ones that we do know, there's, it's so varied. It's a, just, it's amazing. It's, it's so cool. I love that. Um, Rena, I'd never heard of what she did. I hadn't either. That's just blows my mind. I was like, what the hell is geomancy? When she, mm -hmm. when I first met her and I started learning about her stuff, when I first heard the word geomancy, I don't know why, but I thought in my head, I'm like necromancy. I did the same thing. I I'm was like, like, what the what hell is she? that? I'm like, she's creepier than me. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, um, then I figured out what she did and she taught us about it. And I'm like, dang, that is the coolest thing I have ever, I, there's so many cool things out there. And what I like is it's, it's, it's so simple, but it's also so complex at the same time. Yes. It's so easy to do, but it's phenomenal results. I mean, she does, she's, yeah. I've told her that she is one of the most magical people I know. And I know yes. a lot of magical people. So she really is. Uh, there's nothing. I know that she's had ton, like, Lately, she's had some pretty heavy things going on in her life, mm -hmm. but she's always somebody that makes me smile. Always. Yes, absolutely. It she's so matter, much fun. She is. No matter how hard things get for her personally, she's always a light for someone else. So I really mm -hmm. appreciate her being in our lives. Cause absolutely. Definitely need Absolutely. That. We love you, Rita. <laughs> I like to tell them whenever I see Rena and um, when we do the video chats and stuff with Rena and Shelly, I always like to tell them, I love your face. I don't get to see your yeah, face. Yeah, I've seen those comments. <laughs> I don't get to see your face enough. Like on social media, we text so much. I'm like when I see your face, I'm like, yes. Yep. <laughs> I think that's cool. Well, is there, I wanted to see, is there anything that you want to tell? Like, event because I want the event people there's somebody listening here that does pagan events that does events for like the witchy bazaars and stuff they have um is there anything you would like to tell them on how because I imagine some of their, them have fear too like I don't want to offend anybody but I need mm -hmm. to know some things is there anything that you could tell them that are the things that are most important to you when you look at going to an event so what I look at going somewhere, the two main things that I have to check out are one, is it wheelchair accessible, yes. you know, the ground and everything. And two bathrooms. Yes. And bathrooms are a huge thing. And I know, especially if it's, you know, out in the booties somewhere, you can't have the fancy indoor bathrooms. They do have, um, handicapped porta potties. Yes, they do. They're not great. No. <laughs> and not everybody can use them. I can use them with some help it gets pretty close and personal and interesting but i I've, I've done it i have no problem doing it as long as i have a helper that works for me right but i don't i have no idea how much how expensive those are what they run but i mean at least consider that so they have that option and it should always be included um mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> not everybody can walk i mean that's mm -hmm. i that doesn't come to a lot of people's minds but and some people walk with canes yes a, a lot of people walk with canes now mm -hmm. and that's they can't walk on uneven ground. And, and honestly, there are 
disability advocates. Um, I know of a couple, one she's in Canada, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure what the other one is, but there are disability advocates out there that would be more than happy mm -hmm. to, you know, help people understand things. I'm not an advocate, but I'm more than happy to give my opinion on, right. on literally anything, anything, even if it's just some random person curious about something, message me. I don't care. I'll answer. I think but, that that's awesome because I think a lot of people are afraid to ask because they don't yeah. want to offend. And, we, and we, some people... You know, everybody's different. Some people, some people feel like my life is none of your business and I'm not going to answer your questions. Yeah. That's and I feel like all you can do is just politely ask. And if they're one of those people, they're like, nope, then yeah. just respect it and keep going. Move on. That's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm, I'm hoping <clears throat> that's my next, like, I always have a project and <laughs> that's my next project. Um, once this settles down, I would like to contact the ones, the pagan festivals that I was going to go to. I want to talk to them. I have, there is somebody in Colorado that it, Chanda is a, mm -hmm. is an advocate. She has a whole foundation and everything. And I would really like her input on these outdoor festivals. Oh, that would be great. Because like, like Brad and I were like, I, we, we want to, we're like, I want to bring Taryn to one of these. It's yeah. <laughs> great. It'd be so fun. And cause he's that. not like, he's like, I'll go, but I'm really, he's like, how long do I have to stay? So, <laughs> so he's like, I could totally take her and, you know, make a day trip or whatever. But we were like, I don't know. There's nothing on the website about it. So I have no idea what to expect myself when I get there, let alone somebody that I need to know that there's a bathroom and that sort of thing. And I know there's porta potties and they're not that much mm -hmm. more than the rest of them. Cause when we had our thing out at the ranch, mm -hmm. I, I, we got them. So, so I know that they make them and they're not that they're really not any different than buying mm -hmm. kind. So people. Yeah. I have to, when I go places, I have to, usually we have to call ahead and we have to ask very specific questions about the bathroom. You know, I have to ask, is there room that I can get the wheelchair beside the toilet? Because I can't, yeah. I can't stand up to transfer. I have to slide sideways. Right. I have to ask how tall the toilet is, how tall the sink is, wow. you know, all these things. And I've, it's gotten better, especially with the hotel industry, it's gotten better. But they, at the beginning, people were like, why the hell are they asking all these <laughs> questions? I mean, even though you tell them, you could just see it in their face or hear it in their voices. They're like, well, okay, right. yeah. <laughs> do I have to go look at the bathroom? Seriously? I'm like, yeah, I kind of yeah. need that information, please. Yeah. So, so yeah, communication, everything is about open communication. You just have to keep communicating things. Okay. Well, I will, I'm hoping, I, I'm going to talk to her and see if I can get her information too. And maybe I can link it in the show notes. So if mm -hmm. anybody has any questions, she runs a whole uh, organization for. She has resources then, I'm has getting. serious resources mm -hmm. and planning and she's brilliant. So at finding a way. So mm. I think that she would be somebody really cool. I'm hoping that I can reach out to her and she will help me with some of these. Because I know she works with other places like yeah you can go to red rocks and mm -hmm. you can go there um there's all mm -hmm. kinds of places in colorado that you can go however these pagan events um not as accessible i think they mm -hmm. have the half-ass plan or a basic plan and i don't want to be bad mouthing them but i don't think i don't think i think that's from, true though i don't think it comes from a place of malice i don't think no they, no they think oh this is good enough we'll, we'll have mm -hmm. handy get parking and that'll be fine yep like no Yep, I would agree with that. So, hoping they will start thinking a little bit more about it. I know I do. I know every time I sit down to design a ritual or a spell, I think about it. I think about how hard it would be for someone else to do it that can't use their hands fully functional. Or, like, I don't. I know some people require for rituals to stand in all the directions. Mm -hmm. That's not, not everybody can do that. Right. I, I'm lazy and I just don't do it. Um, so. and, and as a person with a disability, I would just like to say that thank you for doing that and for thinking of us because just to be included yeah. is huge because we're used to being overlooked. I'm used to being falling through the cracks and right. being overlooked a lot. So just little things like that are tremendously huge. And we appreciate that. I appreciate that very much, especially for my friends. So thank you. Yes. I think, I think it's, I, I swear to, like, there are two people in my little circle that I know need to write books. You are one of them, and if Natalie is listening, she's the other one. Absolutely. I would buy her book in a heartbeat. Yes. So I still think that, that there, are, there that's on the horizon somewhere for you, 
for you. I really do. You, you a- and my guides both. I know. And I've been getting that information <laughs> in basically every reading I've ever had. So I know, I know it's, I know it's there. I need to just connect with it somehow. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I posted on Twitter the other day. I get so defensive. So I've been working on my book and Brad will be like, I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because he's a guy and he just needs to know. He's like, how many words you have? And immediately I'm like, that's how I feel. I'm like, he's like, how many words do you have? I'm like, why do you need to know? Is it a contest? <laughs> Does it doesn't matter to you. I'm like, why do you care? He's like, I don't know. I just wanted to know. I'm like, <laughs> backing away slowly. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know what it is about it. Like somebody asks, how's your book? I'm like, I'm not far enough along for you. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so there's that. <laughs> so at some point he will read it. I'm not letting him read it either until I'm done. Yeah, I, know this I would too. But he's like not going to maybe appreciate or like. Uh, yeah. I want it to be as close to the truth as possible mm-hmm. without being too truthful. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and it's funny. Um, so... I have everybody's name in there and I've changed the names, but I didn't, he hates his name in the book. I, call him, I don't know why, but his name is Grant in the book. And he's like, wait, what? I'm like, I don't know why your name is Grant. I don't know. I just thought, I was like, what do I name Brad? And it's Grant. So that's great. So that's, yeah, he hates that. So that calling him Grant. At one point, I don't know, but, <laughs> but that's his name for now. Grant. <laughs> Maybe it's because we live in Grant County. Could be. Could be. I don't know how I made those up. Maddie is Claire. <laughs> so, yeah. My, okay, so my, our, remember Spanish class when we had to make our oh. names? Uh-huh. Mine was, mine, oh, the only Spanish phrase I know is, uh, me llamo Diana, soy de Venezuela. <laughs> Literally the only thing I know how to say in Spanish anymore. That's great. So what I was, <laughs> my name in my book is Diane. Awesome. So a little throwback to Spanish class. <laughs> nice. Mrs. Helmer would appreciate that. That's what I thought with all of her redacted <laughs> cuss words in the book. <laughs> yeah. yep, like you can still great. see through it. We would lift, you could <laughs> through to see the cuss words. Yeah. Yeah. That, that didn't work very well. <laughs> mm, no. And we didn't even have the internet back then. Uh, I know. We were <laughs> so resourceful. We didn't have access to it. Mm-hmm. We played Oregon Trail for five minutes. Mm-hmm. That and that stupid shooting game. What was oh that game? Oh, God. That... What was that? Wolfenstein or something mm-hmm. like that. That was that was yeah. big. That was so huge. That was the fir- one of the first, like, first-person shooter type, like, mm-hmm. games that... Gory. So yeah. gory. <laughs> played it in school, just in class. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you doing? Playing Wolfenstein? Yep. Nowadays, it'd be like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well thank you so much for doing this it's been fun and i oh, think it's my pleasure i think that everybody's going to at least get a conversation going about i hope so yeah. i think so i i think it's something that needs to be talked about and i see more there's few i the other podcasters i'm seeing kind of touch on that subject and every once in a while i'll see somebody trying to bring light to it on twitter mm-hmm. um, but Twitter's actually pretty activist heavy. They got a lot of people going on there. I'm kind of impressed. And I'm not like super, I'm so, I suck at Twitter to be honest. I'm so trying, do I. I'm trying, but I have noticed, you know, if you search a certain hashtag or, you know, you can do that and you can see that people are actually posting mm-hmm. more stuff about that and more articles and, you know, Hey, I went here today and I couldn't because, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't accessible. Or somebody nope. else was parked in their spot or parked too close oh to the van and they couldn't get out. Um, All the time. So I, yes. I really do. I know a lot of people bitch about social media, but for me, and I know f- for a lot of us, it's the only way we mm-hmm. connect to people. It's also how we get a voice heard. Yes. And that's how you do it anymore. It's just the reality. Yep. So I'm a I have started opening up a lot more just on my personal page about my day-to-day life and a lot of people follow me and a lot of people a lot of locals. Yeah. Really watch what I say on there which I appreciate. So I've I've tried to in my own small way, you know, raise some awareness of what I go through and I think I have done that. I I so. think so. I think a lot I know everybody like in our class we were very aware. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, going forward in our normal 
lives after high school, I think all of us had a reference mm -hmm. to go, okay, well, that's not right. Cause I know Taryn wouldn't be able to do that. Like, yeah. I know that exactly. when I was going through certain things, you know, it always would be in the back of my mind when I'd go do something or see somebody in a wheelchair on campus. I feel like, how are they supposed to get all the way across campus? I literally lived that experience in my college experience, I and it was the okay. whole system was set up to see me fail. It was just, it, and was. it was an inadequate. It is. They yeah. didn't, it was literally part of what contributed to my downfall was trying, and it was a small, I went to a tiny community college, tiny. Yep. And the walking that I had to do, there were stairs, they had automatic lifts. Yeah. But they took like five minutes to get up 10 stairs. Holy shit. And in the process, it blocked the entire stairwell. Yeah, so everybody means, else couldn't use it. Yeah. So I would be, you know, pissing everybody else around me. So I was self-conscious. So I stopped using yeah. it. Oh my and God. that, that was bad for me. It just, yeah. I mean, we've come, we've come a long way. Yeah. Definitely. But there's, there's still a lot of work to be done. Still a lot of work. I remember trying to get from class to class when I had them close together and have to run all the way across. Mm -hmm. the yeah. It's Nobody, crazy. I could barely do it. Who, what were they even thinking doing that? Like, I don't know. Barney wasn't that big of a campus and I still had mm -hmm. a hell of a time. I was probably hang hung over a lot of those days, but yeah, I that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Well, um, I will make sure that I have. Uh, do you have a link? Can we do? Do you want email? We could do email. I can do my email. Yeah, my email. <clears throat> excuse me, is sandhillsoul at gmail dot com, and you'll have that in the show notes. You, anybody yeah. can message me through through Facebook. I'm happy to chat. Awesome. Are you on Instagram? Yeah, you are. I am Sandhill Soul, I think, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'll put all those there. So if somebody's yeah. not comfortable with email, I know a lot of people just use Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure I put yep. both of those in the, in the show notes and um, in our group too. Like when this is all mm -hmm. done, I'll put it in our uh, Witchy Woman Friends group so that if anybody wants to just grab it right off of there, they can too. Sounds good. I'm always happy to make more connections. So yay, yay friends. Exactly. <laughs> Again, I want to thank Taryn so much for coming on, for sharing and chatting with me. Um, being in quarantine isn't that bad if you have awesome friends you can chat with. So everybody, if you have the ability to reach out to someone that you think may need some support, please do it. We have FaceTime on your phone. You've got, oh my, that was my... I don't know. Did you hear that beep? That was my microwave. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, please reach out to someone. Um, we are, uh, our little group of friends have been doing FaceTimes and Zoom meetings online just so we could see each other's faces and have a good time. And I highly encourage you guys to do that. It has made being inside and being a little fearful a lot easier. So, um, Anyway, I hope everybody is being safe and I want to say if anybody needs anything, if you are in a city where you have no toilet paper and you need some, if you cannot get water, if you cannot get the basic necessities, I need you to please reach out to me because we will make this happen. We have a lot of people listening all over the world and if this podcast could do anything, I want it to help so if it can help you get what you need during these shitty times that we're having, I, I want that to happen. So email me, witchywomanpodcast at gmail.com. Catch me on Instagram at witchywomanpodcast. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on most social medias. You can go to my website, witchywomanpodcast.com, and you can um, click on all of the media links. Oh, also, <laughs> Brad and I did a funny YouTube video. So if everybody could go to my YouTube channel... <laughs> I would appreciate it. I'll put that in the show notes. And um, I did share it in our groups. So um, if you are listening and you're not in our groups, please do join. It's uh, Witchy Woman Friends on Facebook. It's an awesome group of people. If you would like to um, be in our coven and take these classes that I'm going to offer next month, you can uh, go to patreon.com slash witchy woman podcast. And in there, you can click a tier and any of them get you into the group and get you the classes. We also have quarterly gifts. We've been doing meditations. There's my microwave buzzer again. We have meditations and spells and rituals, and it's just a really great group of people. Um, 
Uh, also, you can get access to Shelly Leggett and her readings and the uh, reading group if you're an amethyst or above uh, supporter. Anywho, I hope everybody's doing okay. Please check out our sponsors page. They're all self-employed and in these crappy times it's nice to support others so um go to their websites uh if you go to witchywomanpodcast.com slash uh uh, sponsors (laughs) you can read all about the amazing things that they offer we have earth mama creations she makes jewelry and candles we also have shelly leggett and lavender potions and she is an intuitive medium and she does amazing readings and she offers herbs, and amazing uh, craft materials. We also have uh, Rena Dwelly and Holistic Healing Therapeutics, and she does geomancy. She does amazing energy work. She also creates these badass, incredible, magical keys of the universe. So please check her out. I know she's got a new one coming out soon. So check out all of their sites um, and show them a little love. All right, everybody. Stay safe, take a big breath, and as always, stay witchy. Bye-bye.